I want you to be honest with me, guys. Look at this picture. Tell me that this isn't cold. I'm, I'm being, oh my days. Could you imagine? What's your word, YouTube? It is I, Flip, and today I'm bringing you some heat, maybe, from my couch. It's once again time for an episode of The Couch. This is the series where I sit, you know, on my fantastical uh, relaxation furniture piece uh, to bring you guys either new shows, episode ones, or old shows that I think deserve a talking about, you know what I mean? So uh, sit back, relax, and uh, let's get into today's episode. <sighs> now I'm going to be honest. Alright guys, I'm going to be very real here. I don't know. I, I don't know. Like I'm thinking of an opinion uh, for this show and I just don't have one. Because for every good thing that there is about this show... There's a contradicting negative, right? So first things first, I will say that the dialogue in the show and just the way the characters talk is starkly different from any of Disney's other properties. And like the Ghost of Molly McGee, Owl House, and Phoebe, all of, the, all of that jazz, right? You watch the show and the characters speak like normal people for the most part. If you made the normal talking speed of a person in these shows uh, into just like a benchmark, if you would, I'd call it like one SPM, right? One sentence per minute, which isn't accurate to be fair. If you speak in one sentence every minute, then I don't know. I can't help. I don't know what to tell you there, buddy. This show, based off that metric, would be speaking in five sentences per minute. I'm not even joking to you. Like, just listen to this piece of dialogue from the episode, please. Thanks for that. Whoa, go me. I can't believe I'm actually gonna do everything on my list. I'm gonna learn to play the glockenspiel. I'm gonna invent a new color. I'm gonna kiss Katanoga. Yo, you wanna see some real speed, bitch? I'll show you some real speed. You know what I mean? And that's one of, that's just one of my major problems with the show. Some of the jokes in this show, you know, I think it is in part due to the dialogue being so fast that the delivery is automatically in the dumpster, right? But in Owl House and Amphibia, and even the Ghost of Molly McGee, which is arguably a more kiddie version of those two, the jokes that they say, I can at least respect the joke, you know what I mean? I could look at the joke and be like, hmm, that was a good attempt. I probably got a couple laughs from a select couple of audiences. The jokes in this show, for the most part. There are obviously a few outliers, otherwise the show would be terrible, right? But for the most part, the jokes in this show just... I can't just dumpster on the show, right? Because it doesn't deserve that, okay? Because it's not the worst thing that I've seen this network produce, right? But it definitely doesn't deserve my praise. And that's why we started off with the negatives. But on to the positives, right? What do I like about the show? If you guys want me to watch the full series, can we get 10 likes on the video? That is your benchmark. I'm going to start making benchmarks. Uh, especially for shows that I have no intention of finishing on my own. If you want to see me finish this show, make another couch episode, update my score or whatever, 10 likes. That's what you have to pay, right? Pay the piper. Okay, 10 likes. I like the main character, Haley. whatever on earth that last name is, is a pretty good character to look at. I can't lie. Like, the way she operates, the way she goes about, you know, doing her things... In some instances, yes, don't get me wrong, it can be cringe, but for the most part, it's it's done pretty well. I can't lie, it's done pretty well. The boy, though, oh, he leaves some things to be desired. And by some things, I mean at least two more brain cells, because the way that he's operating, boys, I tell you what, I haven't seen a stupid male main character 
in a minute, right? It's mildly refreshing, I can't lie. The way that they present a lot of these situations in the first episode are somewhat realistic. In that I can tell you now, the most unrealistic part of this whole series is not the fact that there's time travel. It's not the fact that this little girl wins some poor dunk towns competition and then gets the notice of Serena Williams, who's for some reason the president 50 years from now, and then saves global warming. No, no, no. The most unrealistic part of this entire sh- episode one is the fact that 50 years from now, the number one teen romance drama show still has a male and a female lead so anyways that's gonna do it for me okay uh, i just had to just had to get this bit out you know what i mean but yeah remember 10 likes if you want to see another part where i watch the whole thing and comment down below some shows you want to see me talk about or cover uh, that may be upcoming or that have already dropped and you just haven't seen it get the recognition that you know it deserves i'm here for you man i'm here for you so as always, to the people that are new, please say it after me. And to the people who've been around, say it with me. If you like the video, like the video. And if you really like the video, then subscribe. It's that simple. And my videos are going to bring a smile to your day. That's the whole goal and that's the point of what I do. So, if as long as you've done that, I'll catch you on the flip side. Peace.